tuning into my video today. Today we have a very special video. This is my first time doing something different on this channel. Today we're making stacked knitted pants. Let me get a ooh. Let me get a ah. Yeah, that's what we're doing today. And we're going to be making it on the electric knitting machine. So the things you will need is a knitting machine. It could be the central knitting machine as well or a manual knitting machine, whatever you choose. And also you're going to need four balls of yarn. You need two of each color and typically two balls of yarn makes one leg with some leftover. So at the end of your project, you're gonna have leftovers. And you're also going to need a scissor. You're going to need two needles. This is need, the needle that typically comes with the machine, and then this is the needle that I just bought. It doesn't really matter what size, as long as it, you're able to um, crochet your work at the end. I also have one of these weaving needles so that I can take it off of the project. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cast on. It's really important to leave a long tail at the end so you can crochet the bottom of your pants so it doesn't unravel. All you have to do is drop that tail in in the middle of the circle and start to cast on. All casting on really is is wrapping your yarn in front of one hook then pushing it behind one, putting in front one, putting it behind one. The basis of this pattern is doing 30 rows each color and when you're switching colors you don't have to do a cast on method again you just add your yarn in and put it through the tension gauge and then turn your machine back on the rows go as follow 30 60 90 120 150 180 199 240 and 255 the last section is only 15 rows because i wanted more of a low rise look for the pants but i have to stop at 199 in order to start dropping a stitch to make the opening space for the crotch part and that's where we would connect both of the legs together so we're gonna go to 199 and then i'm going to stop all right so i'm at 199 and what i'm gonna do is i'm going to continue it all the way around though all the way around until I have two left. So here we are. And I'm going to take, I'm going to take the yarn off one and I'm going to put it on two. This is where you would need your needle. And it may take a little work to get it off, but it's gonna come off. So now you place this one You place the one that was on one, on two, and this, this is where the hard work comes in. And you put it on top. And I think it's important to make sure that it goes in here. So it makes it harder for the stitches to drop. So now I'm gonna go. So this is where it starts now. So that, that was 199. We're at 200. 200. But I gotta get to 210. Okay. Now 
I'm gonna finish. what you'll notice is that this peg it pushes off the its yarn so that's where I found my trouble so these um, peg 48 and 47 they tend to drop the stitch so when you're doing it just make sure that it doesn't drop or if it if you see it dropping hold it so that when you make your way all the way back around you don't have to start all over all right, and another thing that's important, when you are turning your work back the opposite way, so now this is one, you have to make sure that your yarn hooks under this, this um, peg that's right next to the one that needs to be hooked. Because if you don't, then that will drop a stitch as well. So now I'm gonna go all the way. Then you're going all the way back around until you reach peg. No, 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 if it dropped, it dropped, no. Okay. You're gonna take the yarn from 48 and you're gonna put it on 47. takes a little work the project is kind of tight but it's gonna make it on right now so now as you can see there's no yarn on row one well peg one and there's no yarn on peg 48 so make it all the way over This peg likes to drop, so just make sure that you just push it back on. It starts to drop. This is where I found my trouble. But it's important to make sure that you don't go fast on this row on these rows because this is where your um you're gonna be able to connect the both pants legs and if it's a little messy then you're gonna see it in your work so just make sure you drop that under and then you could put your work back this way now we are another one we got it going need this one to drop under this peg and then we can pull it all the way back this way and then we put one perfecto now you see this one it's the only this is the only piece of yarn that's holding on this peg because it has dropped see it lifted off it lifted off so now you have to just make sure that it doesn't drop just put it back on the peg put it back here and then In, drop it in we're gonna go to 141 at this point when you're changing colors you want to make sure that you put the yarn under the red peg closest to the peg that needs to be hooked 
So this is my last section and I'm gonna do black. As you can see, there is a space here for us to connect to the other pants and it has a, a cleaner finish than if you watched my um, shorts, my um, short video on this. You can see that it isn't as clean, so I'm gonna show you now how I make it so clean, even though sometimes it drops stitches. Okay, so I put it in. When you get here to the last peg with yarn on it so that it doesn't drop a stitch, I just stick my needle in and I, as the, as the needle is lifting up, raising, I just make sure to hold it and put it in so that it doesn't go. Here. you see this is where you kind of lose the pegs but it's hard to get my yarn under these pegs without losing these over here so now I'm gonna do it back make sure that your work is tight because you did just change threads right so now now when you get over here, you just put your work down and make sure that you put your needle in here so that it doesn't come off of the needle. I'm gonna give you a closer and better view. Now we're getting over to this last peg again. You're gonna just put your needle, your hook in there, give it some room. And as the peg is lifting up, just wrap that needle around it. After your last row, choose a different color yarn and cast off. What you do is you start at the opposite end of where you finish your work. So where this long piece is, you're gonna start on the opposite side. And what you're gonna do is you're going to go in here and here and you're going to crochet it so you're gonna pull up this one you're gonna do that until you reach the end of the pants pull up this one and go under here I'm not gonna lie this part of the pants I tried to take a shortcut when I made the pants the first time I tried to sew them together with a sewing machine and that made the pants extremely tight so I just figured to do the mattress stitch Another important step is to tie all of your loose strings together so all of the places where you change colors you are going to tie them together so your work doesn't unravel. I hope this video was helpful and I hope it inspires you to blow the dust off your knitting machine that's been hiding in your room for years. I also want to give credit to the person that I got this pattern from, Freja Knits, and I'll be tagging her video down below. All right, university students, class is now dismissed. Thank you for tuning into this video and see you again soon.